look what the cat drug in here. Yep, I know it's got too many tires. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take one off and, uh, <clears throat> and then that way we can work on it. We'll still claim it's a three wheeler. How about that? Is that fair? What we have here is a second gen Honda Odyssey. They produced this one from, uh, let's see, 81 through 84. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. This is the first one I've actually had any contact with in probably 25 years. I knew a kid growing up, he had a yellow one and it sat in his yard and I never saw him ride it. <laughs> it probably looked just like this one 25 years ago. And uh, so what I've learned is the yellow one is your first gen and they started in 77 through 80 yeah 77 through 1980 was your first gen and your second gen picked up in 81 and ran through 84 growing up there was honda had honda had it going on i mean they had all the coolest toys if uh if you ever had the opportunity to go to a honda dealership in the 80s well it kind of looked a little bit like my garage here um, which I'm, I'm pretty thankful to have been able to find and, and gather as many of these as, as I have been able to. So please, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, I'm very humble. I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that I've been able to find them. And really, probably within two hours of where I live, I have found every single one of these bikes. And, you know, it's, it's probably within two hours from where you live too, but you have to be diligent. This Odyssey was listed for 17 minutes before I got it. I just happened to pop up. I just happened to look at my phone and it just happened to come up. Um, normally, Marketplace tells me there's their stuff in Oklahoma and Texas and Maine, but for whatever reason, this was right down the road for me. This was 10 miles from my house, 10 miles from my house. But in the 80s, you had a collection of the, the coolest toys. You had your mini bikes, you had little Z50s, uh, and, and the, uh, the CT70s were around. Uh, I know they'd been around for a while, but that, that collection of toys, the, the three-wheelers, four-wheelers were just starting to come out in 87. The Odysseys had been out since 77. The CT70s, the, the Z50s, I mean, Honda had it going on. And uh, <clears throat> this, like I said, this is the first one I've actually ever touched in 25 years. And so it's gonna be a learning curve. Here's some things I do know. I did some research last night. You gotta do your homework. It's always important to do your homework. So why I couldn't come out to the shop and work on it, I downloaded the manual. It's the first thing I always do. Whatever bike I have, I download the manual. You can find those for free at the Oscar Mayer ATV manual website. I'll put it in the link in the description. Oscar Mayer did not have the Odyssey ma uh, service manual, but Audi, Audi, Audi ATV, A D D Y ATV dot com gave me both the second, the first, the second, and the third gen ATVs. I went ahead and got them both because you don't know a year from now I may come up with a pilot. That would be sweet. We're going to keep our eye out for a pilot. I could look at this bike at the sellers and I did a little research before I went. And, and research is everything, y'all. It really, really is. It's the difference between buying something that's actually gonna run again and buying something that's parts is your research. You need to know what you're buying. So a couple of things right off the bat. You Odyssey people, you probably already recognize this. This is the Honda. Uh, this was a, a second gen only. They brought up the snorkel here. It comes down to the air box, which is down here. Look at this air box, it's still in place. Nobody's monkeyed with it. The tail light's not broken off on the back of it. That's all of this gets in the way with somebody spraying carb cleaner and thinking they're gonna fix something when they don't know what they're doing. Um, the muffler gets taken off. They rot out. This muffler is in place. Two spark plugs. <clears throat> I did not know this. I found this out last night. So the reason you would have two spark plugs, that's not gonna work. The reason you would have two spark plugs is you could be out riding one, 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 but when you file one out, you just take it over, put it on the next plug and you can ride home. That's the reason that there's two plugs. This is a two stroke engine. It is very comparable to the 250R of this generation, but it doesn't have a transmission. So it's gonna have a different case to it and it's pull start, which is also different from the 250R of this, of this generation. This would be considered the second generation 
uh, 250R if it was if we were comparing it to the ATC 250R. So it's similar, but it's it's different. I mean, you have a CVT style transmission, which is what you'd find on a on a nice go kart or a uh, golf cart. Now um, you have basically two drive. You have a drive pulley and a driven pulley. As one pulley expands, the other pulley contracts. That gives you your gears. Um, remember, this is going to be a two-stroke, so it's going to want to run at high RPM. It's not going to have a lot of torque. It's going to have a lot more horsepower. These were not that fast. You think 250R, you think it would be lifting the front tires off the ground. They're not that fast. They're quick. They're fun, but they're not that fast. From what I'm read, again, I have no experience with one of these. I'm just looking this over and comparing it to the manual, comparing it to other videos that I found online. YouTube, there's a ton of videos for these. I could only find one will it run, so that's good company. What I did look for, and I knew this going in, anything that has a seat on it is going to be roached out. You can see the seat is completely shot. There's nothing left here. And what you want to do on an Odyssey is you want to look at the frame. You want to make sure that the frame, and this is a mess, you want to make sure that the frame rails are of good metal they're not rotted out and so the first thing i did is i got this seat out of the way and this is all just garbage and i know some of y'all are cringing but a couple of bolts and that will literally just fall off frame rails on this buggy are straight as i can tell the, the, the bike looks like it's sitting properly and yes i'm going to refer to this as a bike sometimes because that's what i'm used to but the frame rails are solid inside and out both sides the left and the right rail Look, the frame is intact, is intact, and it's in good shape. And that's what we're, that's what our main concern was, first and foremost, was was the frame here in the south. That's what we, we worry about is rust. And so the frame is in really really good shape. Second thing we wanted to make sure was that the engine was not locked up. Now, as you see, the pull cord has been pulled out of this one, but there's about six inches of pull cord that's still in this bike. If you watch, right there, we're actually turning the engine over. And it will start to go back in, and that's good. And I don't want that to break off. But if you, we actually can spin the engine over just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is, I've been thinking about this all night and uh, trying to get a game plan together. You know, I wanna figure out what's it gonna take to make it run. And, uh, and that's what we're gonna find out today. But a couple of things you need to know, Mayor, makes it repops these fenders. This tub down here where your footwell is, they call it the tub, that is not remade. And as you see, this one's seen better days. It's, it's thin, this is fiberglass through here. This is not plastic. So that's important that the tub is in good uh, condition because you can't really find, uh, nobody remakes it. You can find a, a, an old one, I guess, but nobody remakes that. There was a headlight here. The second gen had a headlight here. That's what this wiring is for. Uh, the net was original to this Trying to find discern what's original and what's not what did somebody add to this? What did somebody take away from this? What are you missing when you find a barn fine or a yard fine or wherever you find it Come it being complete is so important. Look we're missing a switch here. This should be our let's see All right, this is our headlight switch here on the left high medium or high and low and off and then over here this is actually where our start switch our on off and start switch is we're missing that so that's that's good to know that's probably a unique part to just odysseys you have your throttle which this one is locked up i'm squeezing it now and it's not moving so we know we're going to be looking at a cable again downloading the manual i know now that all of the connections for the cables how the shaft runs over and controls these levers, I need to go right in here. And so little things like that give me confidence. I can look at a book, I can look at the pictures, and I can go, oh, okay, now I see how it works. Now I know how to take it apart if I have a problem. So this one, this Audi here, we have a jammed up or a locked up cable. Uh, I wouldn't be, I, you know, I'd be surprised if it wasn't. This over here, this is all hand controls. As you see, there's no foot controls. This over here is what you have is a cable operated, which it's, it's locked up too. This is a cable operated disc brake only on the rear. There are no front brakes on this bike. Um, 
so control wise we have none so that's always that's always a good place to start there finding out what you have we know that this bike because we lit our research has a fuel pump and they were notorious for going out and the fuel pump is located right down here on the back or the inside of the gas tank this is your gas tank which is a metal tank so you can go ahead and you can probably count on that tank being full of rusty nasty gas and rainwater and everything else we do have a fuel on and off petcock down here on the bottom of the tank so it was gravity fed basically in the tank to the bottom of the tank and then as it came around it was it was picked up by a vacuum pump just like you would find on a uh, on a riding lawnmower here and then from there it was sent over to the carb and again being complete I can look at this bike and I know what these things are because they're still connected to the original source if you will the original place it's different when you walk up to a bike and you find 15 wires just laying out you know on the head you don't know where any of those wires go so looking at this we know what's our accelerator we know what our fuel line is and you know there's going to be a ground doing some research again last night we know that this is a cdi um, ignition system the first gen was a pickup and points uh, system the second gen is a cdi and that's what this is we can look here and see that this coil it's got a big crack running across it so i wouldn't be surprised if that coil probably doesn't work someone has been here and that's another thing when things look at a place things don't look right they're not they're not looped up nice and neat they're not tucked into to the areas and the, the little latches and hooks that the factory puts in you know that the wiring on this is not right because it just doesn't look right so again looking at the book last night i know that this is coming out of our stator here okay and somebody's been here they've been they've been working on it I, everything seems to be connected and that's good it was covered up to some extent because the colors of the wires aren't faded that just means that the seat was sitting here i mean that doesn't mean anything but it makes our life a little easier all right here's some orange wires and there's two orange wires and they go all the way to the front so i'm guessing that somebody was probably working on these headlights these are not original headlights here somebody just added them and that's probably what this is the factory did not use uh, gray duct tape electrical tape not a big uh, product used at the dealership this is our cdi box now keep in mind now one this is two stroke so it may we may run into some differences but because it's a cdi system it's going to use a lot of the same parts and components as the three wheelers that's just that's why i picked this up i mean it's not going to be that different from what i'm used to working on and, and we've talked about that in other videos <clears throat> I try to stay in my wheelhouse. It makes me comfortable. I'm not out here pulling my hair out. What's left of it? I'm not out here pulling my hair out because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm learning new things. It's, it's a lot of repetition. It's not always the same, but it gives me confidence to come out here and tackle a new project. I've never touched an Odyssey before, but I know that the time period that this was made was between 81 and 84. I'm familiar with the 81 to 84 three-wheelers and motorcycles and things of that nature. So this is going to have a lot of the similarities. I know that Honda uses the same wiring chart. I've showed that to you before. I'll show it to you before this video is over. I have a, a, a chart. You can get that same chart. It's nothing special. It's at the, the uh, Oscar Mayer website. And it gives me, again, the confidence to, to look at a wire and go, oh, it's a blue and white wire. I know it's a headlight. Oh, it's a black wire with a red tracer. I know that's coming out of the stator. It's a yellow wire. I know it's the main feed. I, I, I know it's ground. It's, you know, it's green. It, it's black. I mean, those are the reasons I stay in this era. Not only is it re reliving my childhood, but I've learned it. So now I can apply what I've learned, and it just comes to me a lot easier. And it's amazing how you can study and that's what we're going to call it. You can study for hours on a service manual on one of these bikes and never get bored and never get frustrated and never have your attention lost. But if you put a history book in front of me or an economics book or something like that, and you may get 20 minutes out of me and my mind's wandering because I'm thinking about something out here in the shop. But that's just how I'm wired, you know. So I'm gravitating to what I like and what I enjoy doing. And you'll find that 
if you enjoy something, it's not work. Now that's just that's just the way life is. If you can if you can make a living at what you love doing, then you'll never have a work a day in your life. And that's the old saying. And uh, and there's there's a lot of truth to that. So back to the buggy here. I like to kind of come up with a plan. I like to assess what I'm doing. I don't just want to jump in and, and make a lot of mistakes right out of the gate. I want to look at this logically and, and make a plan. And so my first plan is we've got to make sure that this engine is good. So we know that this pull cord is shot. So we need to be working on that. That's our first thing we need to work on. But while we're doing this, we could go ahead and pull this plug and we can go ahead and put some uh, lubricating uh, fluid, you know, like a, a PB blaster, uh, which is what I like to use. We can go ahead and put that in the cylinder head and let that be soaking in. We know this bike has been sitting a long time. So to hedge our bet on making it run today, Let's go ahead, we're gonna pull the plug, we're gonna inspect the plug and kind of see what the plug tells us. And then we're gonna go, and I'm gonna pull the carb and the intake off of it because more than likely critters have gotten in there. We've got a lot of open passages and so forth. That's another reason why I do most of these. When I drag these out of the bushes, I get them in the winter time because I don't like critters. So we're gonna you know, move forward cautiously. While we're working on the pull cord, we're gonna go ahead and let the piston be soaking. And then we're probably gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the carburetor. We'll see, because I don't have any control over it, we're gonna see is it the cable or is it the slide that's locked up. Depending on what we find out there is gonna affect how we can move forward. Um, that's the choke, and it does work, believe it or not. But I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna spray all this down with some lubricant and kind of let all this, all these parts start soaking and simmering or whatever word you wanna use. All right, so we moved over here to the workbench and we've got our uh, our pull cord assembly out. And, and, and you know, it, it's just like, pretty much just like all the other ones uh, on the three wheelers. A little gasket, look at that. Isn't that crazy? Still in good shape. Now I've got a video on how to uh, how to redo one of these if you uh, if you have one that's completely needs a complete rebuild what we have here our dogs are still this is what I call the dogs these little triangle pieces that come out some people call them spurs some people call them fi uh, fingers I call them dogs I don't know why you, you just that's what I call them so uh, the dogs are coming out which is great because a lot of times that's the problem and you'll pull on the rope and it won't engage the engine at all that's not our problem. Our problem is it's not winding back up. On the inside of this, there's a spring. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this top cover and we're just gonna lubricate it. We are not gonna take this apart. All right, so what we have here, I was mistaken. It's not the tension on the spring, though I did increase the tension on the spring. This nut was so tight, watch when I let go of my fingers. It wants to come all the way back. Ooh, look at that. Somebody's been in here. We're gonna have to get rid of that right now, aren't we? We can't have that on our on our on our Honda.
We almost jinxed the whole build right there. It never would have run with that on it. I promise you. I'm... You see now without the pressure of that bolt, the spring recoiled just like you wanted it to, like it's supposed to. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this out, trying to figure out, okay, I don't wanna break anything. These are our dogs here. We have this spring here that was pushing up on this cap. And then this spring. check on spark since we're here really turns the crank feels really good I mean there's and I know this is pretty far out you know on the but I don't feel any 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 play whatsoever up or down or in or out or anything um, that's that's a great sign it really is e even though we're this far out if it was really really wore out I mean remember this thing could be 30, 35 years old. We start, <laughs> we start showing our age a little bit there, fellas. You know what I'm talking about. So lifting up out here on this drive wheel, this cog, if there was any play in it, we would feel it, you know, if it was really bad. I'm gonna take the plug out. You saw me pull it out earlier and, uh, and spray some PB blaster in there. And so, so here's our plug. So our, now our next thing, we know that this has got a crack in it, this coil. We CDI boxes in place, so it means it's not missing. As for the rest of the, the, the wiring, here's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna tell y'all a little trick. <laughs> well, somebody's already stole some, the, the switch out of it. So if this is the same as the three-wheelers, the trick is, is you don't need any controls on the handlebars to be plugged in for the bike to run. The controls on the handlebars only turn the bike off. Your kill switch is just that. It's a kill switch. What it does is it grounds the coil out. If there's a short in the kill switch, that's a good place for a lot of bikes to have a lot of problems. You just crank and crank and crank and crank and crank. And you don't know that the kill switch is broken on the inside. On the outside, you're looking at it and the kill switch says it's in the run position, but on the inside it's broken, you'll never know. So if you have a bike that you're just cranking on and cranking on and you're not getting any spark and it's not running, disconnect your kill switch and then go back and check for spark since the kill switch is completely missing i have no idea if the wires are grounded out or touching or whatever so here's what i'm going to do we're going to just check it we're just going to wing it why not right it's friday night for me it's probably sunday night for you so i've got our gasket here i'm going to put it right back on i mean if it's made it this long <laughs> who am i to leave it off right you know all right so get them all started by hand and then you can run them in carefully with your impact gun so now moment of truth do we have any spark let's see i'm gonna bet not but we're gonna hope for the best I see no spark. I don't feel any spark either. So what we're going to do is we're going to work backwards on this. I'm going to grab another coil and let's see what we can make happen today. Will it run? They say, will it run? I don't know. It might. Okay. Somebody's been in here. Look at that. See how that's been cut back. That's good. That's good. Somebody's trying. There's a zip tie on here. An old zip tie. All right, so what we got here, this is our old coil, and I mentioned it earlier, you know, when we were kind of given an assessment of the, the Audi, we saw that this was cracked and broken. And a coil is, it's kind of like a battery. And what it does is it stores power or current, and then it discharges it when it's told to do so. And so you know as well as I do, that a battery with a crack in it ain't no good. 
So I got another coil here, and this is off of a three-wheeler, and look at this. Look how everything just matches up exactly like it was. And this is what I was counting on. I was really counting on that Honda used the same parts on this piece of equipment. The throttle cable is, is troubling me. I, I'm not sure what's locked up. Is it the slide or the, the cable? All right, so we've got our green wire, which is our ground back in place. We've got our black wire, which is our signal wire. That's what tells the coil to, uh, to discharge. Now I'm gonna take our plug back out. And you could use the new plug. That would be the next step. But because that coil had a crack in it, I was pretty sure that was gonna be a problem. One of many problems, probably. All right, let's see what we got. Can you see that? I can't see it. I have a hunch that I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna change the plug. I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna change this plug out before we go. Always check the little things. Check, check the cheap things. Check the things that are easy to get to first. You know, mechanic and a lot of, a lot of mechanic is a process of elimination. Here I'm take, taking the tail light off right now in an attempt to get the air cleaner off. And uh, taking the air cleaner off so I can get the carburetor off. And I'm getting the carburetor off so I can take the throttle cable and the slide out of it because the slide is completely hung up. All right, so our tail light, like I said, is still connected together. Look at this. I mean, that's just amazing. It really is. Pretty good reason why it was parked. The intake is separated from the rubber housing here. It's vulcanized to an aluminum adapter and it should not move around like that. We'll see. I hope that's not it. That, that could be kind of catastrophic for this video. It, all right, so I think I got it figured out, y'all. Took me a minute. These uh, clamps on these hoses do not. The clamps come loose, but the hoses don't want to come loose. So what I've ended up doing, kind of working on it from across the room here with an extension, and I just unbolted the entire carburetor. I think from the engine. So at least now we can real quick. Wow. All right. So here's the thing. If you ever need to make hoses and plumbing and stuff, you see that lip that's machined onto this one? If it didn't have that lip, it would have just slid right off. You can replicate that lip if you can weld. You can weld a light bead all the way around, or you can put this in a bead roller, which is what they did, uh, and form it, or you can spread it out. But anyways, that little lip gives that hose all the strength in the world. And as you saw, it will keep you from getting it off for sure. So we got a couple things going on here. We still got a fuel line to contend with. And the whole reason we went this direction was because the throttle uh, cable and slide is completely stuck. Our problem here. There's the problem. Yep. All right, this intake is vulcanized here. You see this? And it's come loose. It's It's been sucking air, basically. And, uh, and not doing its job, all the, the weight of this carburetor and, and bouncing around and everything. So here's what I'm gonna do. It's an original car, so that's good. It's a key, key in. 
I think the best thing to do is I'm gonna turn the parts washer on and I'm gonna put this in the parts washer and we're gonna clean it and let it soak for a while. All right, guys, so here's what we got. Our carburetor is a mess. The slide is completely frozen down in the bottom of the carburetor, but the slide looks good. It's not marred up or anything. If we can get that slide loose, I, I think we'll be able to save the carburetor. So that's, that's good. Uh, and if I can't, y'all know who we're going to call. 223 Cycles. It's the man to know. He can get it out if I can't. But all that said, here's what we got. We've got spark. We've got a pull rope. I do not know what the compression is on this engine. Um, it, it, who, who knows what, it's, what it is? I don't know. Um, I'm going to do something, and then I'm going to recommend that you be careful if you try to do it. I'm going to try to make this run off of a little carbon choke cleaner. Now, let me, let me please e e express concern. There's no lubrication. This is a two stroke. It needs lubrication not to score the cylinders. I think just busting it off, if it'll run, I think we'll be okay. We're not gonna hurt anything. Um, but please don't just sit there and spray and run and spray and run. That's, that's terrible on an engine. So, wish me luck. And let's see what's going to happen. Will it run, right? 2022? Just the first one? Alright, there it is, y'all. There it is. Will it run? 2022. There you go. There he is. Will it run? 2022. Fresh out of the backyard, y'all. Fresh out of the backyard. Whew. Uh, we got a long ways to go on this on, on this buggy. It's uh it, it, it is far from, from roadworthy. But that's the encouragement that you get when you work on this stuff. It it's it's fix something, assess the situation, and move to the next problem. Just like we talked about in the beginning of this video, the first thing we needed to make sure we had was that pull cord. We needed to make sure that piston wasn't locked up. Once we had that, and it's still not 100%, you saw me kind of had to pull on it a little bit. I think we're gonna have to go back into it and check it a little bit more, but I'm still, it worked. Once we got that running, we needed to check for spark. We went over that, we found spark by replacing the coil. The coil was obviously bad. Once we changed the coil out, we still didn't have spark. Before we went digging any deeper, the next thing to do was to change that plug. I had cleaned the plug, but still didn't have any spark. I put a new plug in it, and we had spark. But for me, honestly, that the spark is the, is the biggest hurdle. Once I have spark, then I know that fuel and air is kind of a freebie. I needed to know compression. Unfortunately, just these two strokes, my compression gauge won't screw into them. It takes an adapter, and I can't find mine. Um, I know that's hard to believe as organized as I am. <laughs> I don't I don't know where it is. Excuse me. It's cold out here. Um, you can see my breath. It's cold. Once I had spark, we were good. It was good to try. Because it hit like it did, we know that we have enough spark to create a flame front and create power. It runs. Now I'm encouraged. Now I can spend money on it with cables and, and intakes and carburetors and tires and, and seats and, and all that other good stuff it's going to take to really make this riding again and comfortable and work, you know, like it's supposed to. But that's, that's the beauty for me for mechanics. That, that's why I do it. It's the little wins all along the way. It was fixing that pull cord, pulling it out, and it retracting it back in. That's a win. I put it back on the machine. I check it, I don't have spark, I replace something, I get spark, that's a win, and I move on to the next thing. And by the time you get done moving on to the next thing, it runs. And that's why I do it. There's the satisfaction I get from that because so many people would have walked away from it. Let me look at it, it's a pile of junk. But I just got it, I just made it run. 
and you can make it run too. And we didn't use expensive parts and we didn't use computers or anything like that. We used basic hand tools and a general understanding of mechanics. That's all it really takes for the most part. It really, really is. Is it perfect? Is it gonna be brand new? No, it's not. It's never gonna be. I paid $300 for it, y'all. $300. You'll spend that going out this weekend. That's, that's, that's what it boils down to. It, it can be cheap fun. It really, it really can be. That's, that should be the name of this channel, Cheap Fun. <laughs> I'm having fun and I'm keeping it cheap and I'm trying to keep it real. I want y'all to be encouraged to, to try things that maybe you've never done before. I've, I've never touched an Odyssey before. I have no idea. Uh, up until the 250R, I've never worked on a two stroke. I've owned a couple, but I've never had to really diagnose and work on one. There's a big difference, big difference. Starting from scratch on this Odyssey, I learned everything I needed to know last night by looking through the manual that's free to download and watching some YouTube videos from other creators that have had Odysseys and builds and projects just like what I'm doing. And between those two things and general understanding of mechanics, I just made smoke tonight, y'all. I just made smoke. That's it. That's what it's about. So, so I'm, I'm excited. Now I can go and I can work on that carb in the back of my mind. I know when I put that carb on there, it's going to run because the motor's good. You know, and when I start having to spend some money like tires and belts and cables and seats and stuff, I'm going to know on the inside, hey, it's going to run so I can justify spending the money on those parts. I would never put tires on this thing and seats and cables and stuff without knowing it runs first. That's the most important thing. You've got to make sure that you've got the fundamentals and it runs. The next thing for this particular piece of equipment is to make sure that the, the clutch mechanism works. Once we get a carb on it and we get it running and dialed in a little bit, then we check the clutch. That's the next thing you want to check on this. If the clutch checks out and it runs and engages and disengages like it's supposed to, then brakes, because we can keep it on the, on the stands and verify those things. Once we get the brakes and the controls and, and everything, then we're ready to ride. Then you can buy tires. And that's, and that's kind of the order of doing things, is spend the money as you need it as you go through the project. We don't need tires right now. What we need now is a carburetor and an intake and an air filter and an oil change and some other things. So we're gonna spend money there. And each time we do that, it gets a little bit closer to running and riding. And then once we start to see the light at the end of the tunnel, when we can fire it up on jack stands and we can run it, we can watch the axle engage, we can watch the brakes stop and everything's good, then we can put tires on it. And that's how you need to think of your, of your projects. I know sometimes they get overwhelming and, and sometimes you, you spend a lot of money and you maybe spend it in a different order and you, you don't have that reward for the expense and the time that you spend out in the shop. I, I, can't, I can't tell you how many times I talk to people that I see projects that have big shiny wheels on them but the motor don't run. I just, just a, just a little, just a little you know, wisdom there, a little, a little advice if you will. It's, it's worth exactly what you paid for it, but spend the money based on the priorities of the project and you will be so much happier. I'm sure the project I'm thinking of, a guy's got some really shiny wheels on a bike, but the motor don't run. At $500, he put in wheels and tires. If he'd have put it in the engine, I bet he would be so much happier today knowing his bike ran and he just needed wheels and tires than to have wheels and tires on a bike that don't run. And so for that, I'll leave it with you tonight, y'all. It's getting cold. It's getting late. Uh, my neighbors do like me, so I fix their stuff for free. It's kind of a trade-off. So I get to make a little noise late at night. It's dark outside. Check that out. It is dark central. Yep. Okay. Well, will it run 2022? I think this is a, I don't even know what year this is. I have no idea. I haven't even looked it up. I know it's between an 81 and an 84. If you know what year it is, uh, help me out. You know, put it in the comments. Uh, I know a lot of y'all have these. If, if you saw something that I need to know, Put it in the comments. I read every one. I try to answer every question I can. I respond to, to everybody. I, I'm grateful for your interaction. And maybe you can tell me where I can get one of those intakes at. The, the vulcanization has come, come off. Um, I can try to fudge it, but I would really like to replace it with the right part. You know what I mean? Um, if you know 
where I can find one of those, please put it in the comments. If, if you've run into something building your own and you go, hey, you need to watch out for this, please put it in the comments. This is uncharted territory for me. This thing has four wheels on it. So you see, I had to take one off just so I could work on it because three wheels feels right. Four wheels is too much. So I took a wheel off so I could work on it properly. I'm teasing. Y'all take care. Good night. And uh, thanks y'all as always. Thank you for watching and subscribing. I appreciate it. And I hope y'all had fun. Good night.